Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to the Fractured Rooster. As you can see behind me, the, the Bronco's kind of swarmed with stuff. Uh, what, it's been, it's been probably two months since I've been on YouTube. And that was due to an unfortunate death in the family. Uh, there's really no easy way to put this. My father passed away. Uh, and I had to deal with, uh, I had to deal with a lot of stuff. This is just one of many many storage locations uh, my dad was a <laughs> my dad was a, uh, a car guy just like myself he had plenty of projects and tools and and things all over the place and I've spent the better part of two months rounding all that up and dragging it all back here to Wichita Kansas uh, which has required me to buy a, a truck and a trailer and a tractor uh, it's been it's been uh, been an experience um, but I'm going to combine his projects with my projects and finish up a bunch of stuff that he was working on uh, I don't know maybe as a grieving process I'm not really sure but I think that's what he would have wanted so uh, we're gonna finish up the Bronco next after today today we're gonna go put brakes on the Ranger so that we can get it sold I need that. I need that driveway space. If I, if uh, you guys will understand in a couple of videos what I mean by uh, he left me some projects. It's no understatement to say it's been overwhelming. Um, it's been difficult, but we're going to keep moving forward. Having said all that, I think we may have overgrown the fractured rooster garage uh, so I'm out scouting looking for other locations other buildings other plots of land to develop build on I'm not sure what the future holds for me or the fracture rooster um, but it's clear that I need more space I'm borrowing and begging to, to use shops and garages of my friends right now to store a lot of stuff in and that's not fair to them so uh, I think we're gonna spread our wings a little bit and find another another garage temporarily at minimum to work out of so this may be one of the last projects you see in this shop in this house for that matter I'm not really sure what's gonna happen next to get some certainty back in my life I'm gonna jump back on a familiar project that Ranger one of the front brake calipers is sticking so today we're going to do front brakes on the Ranger, brakes, hoses, pads, caliper paint evidently was on the list. Uh, so we're going to go pick up a buddy, run over to his shop, use his lift because it'll make it so much easier. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the road. All right, well, we're back here in the Watch JR Go warehouse with JR and the parts. Parts. We stopped by O'Reilly's and picked uh, brake calipers, uh, pads, and hoses, and some caliper paint because, you know, we want to keep those things looking nice. I'm just here for these, doctor. Doctor. Let's I get got, to work. I got extra mediums for you. <laughs> extra medium. <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right, well, let's get this thing in the air. Sweet. Uh, but I don't think we've ever been under the Ranger. I tried to do a little burnout in front of the shop to add to lots of the uh, black marks out there, and these uh, these tires are a little too sticky for the 2.3 liter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but here's an undershot. There's a new the new muffler, the new fuel tank, the new fuel filter, the new fuel pump, the new fuel lines, and uh, that's really about all we did down here. Honestly, that's all we did down here. But I put one tank of gas through it. I've got 265 miles on three quarters of a tank. And I noticed the other day when I got out, there was a weird ticking noise. I thought it was my catalytic converter, like mm -hmm. being hot and cooling off. Mm -hmm. Then I realized it was coming from this wheel. Ooh. So I put my hand on one of the spokes and the wheel itself was like 
300 degrees. You got the gravity brake. Yeah, so. Dude, these brake lines are antique and trash. Yeah. Cloth brake lines. <laughs> these are literally, first they're stretched to the limit and oh, they're cloth. Wow. Yeah, these are terrible. Why are they stretched? Oh, because we're hanging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full suspension jerk. Yeah. But they're both trash. Like they're they're super old. So I think brake lines might, yeah. might really sort this. Yeah, sticking caliper is usually never the fault of a caliper, it's usually the fault of the line. Or a master or something. Or a master or something. Not, yeah, not letting the pressure go back, but parts for these trucks are so cheap. The calipers are like $16. The lines are like 18 So yeah. why gamble? If you're going to be under it, just be under it once. Absolutely. Throw the throw 50 bucks at it instead of 15 bucks, and you'll be happy. Boom, boom. Sweet. Yeah, sadly, I think she's going to get new brakes, and I think she's going to get listed. Because as I mentioned, I've got to make room for many, many projects that I just inherited. You got a lot of cars. Yeah. I, yeah. They're all pretty much in JR's shop right now, <laughs> in his back shop. Eric went over there and goes, well, you have 15 cars next door. I was like, no, I don't. I have like five. <laughs> I was like, oh, yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can go take a look at that big trailer I talked about. Okay, you got this? Can you one-hand it? Uh, no, I can't. It needs a freaking punch. Mm. Wow. Mm the right wheel for that. They are hub centric. Yeah. Will it blend? This is the wrong tool. <laughs> Robo grips are always the wrong tool for the job. As we both know, Josh and I are the only people that <laughs> either of us know that ever owned a pair of Robo grips. They're awesome. I got these for Christmas when I was like 14. Or 80s kids, a group of Robo Cop. So Robo anything with Robo, Robo in the name grips. is awesome. All right, this is the tried and true method. Okay. Bring in the small hammer. Yes. Very easy. Nice. Cool. Now let me get the three eighths that I couldn't find earlier. Here we Keep go. pushing. Yep. Three eighths socket or extension. Done. All right, so first step after driving these pins out and getting the calipers loose is getting the top fitting off the back side of this brake hose. And you're gonna need a line wrench to do that. A 7 16 This is a captured fitting. So from the back side, use your flare wrench just to break that connection free while your joint is still captured. Okay. Now there's a metal clip that sits right behind that flare joint that we just broke apart that holds this fitting into this frame spring perch mount. Now it's all covered in grease. We gotta figure out how to pry that apart without destroying it. Ugh. That's what that looks like. That clip, that plugs in right through that hole. So until you break that fitting and completely remove it, you can't remove this clip. Thankfully, I remembered that before I mangled this thing beyond use. Now with that loose, you can take the brake hose out of the front and uh, pull the entire caliper off. Oh. With the use of a pry bar. Uh, we're gonna paint the calipers first, obviously, throw it all back together. And uh, this will be a 30 minute brake job. Um, and the only reason I'm painting these, I'm not painting them to look cool, I'm just painting them so that they don't rust. It's a big pet peeve of mine is seeing rusty brake calipers. As it's so easy to prevent by doing this right here. back inside I'm starting to break a sweat all right so while our calipers are drying we'll get the old calipers off nice and easy yeah those hoses were completely shot they're cracking and so there's a plastic tube inside of all of this that is typically the problem it gets soft and it'll expand and it won't allow pressure to flow back to the master correctly it will retain a lot of pressure in the caliper and that's typically what makes these things stick it's not that they're frozen in place. Yeah, that one's not frozen. 
it's just there's too much too much bloating going on in the in the hose to allow the pressure to go all the way back to the master so well now putting it back together is quite honestly the exact same process as you would imagine stick that through the hole put your clip on the back hook up your brake line fitting bolt on your caliper load your pads and you're done well a quick o'reilly's run to get some brake fest brake fluid full synthetic not four jr's in the cab hyping up the oil yeah, you gotta hype up the <laughs> he's gonna be my brake man on this job are you a brake man are you a pump man are you a hype man what are you right now i don't know they call me the brake master <laughs> call me the brake master <laughs> so most of the fluid drained out when we had those calipers unhooked which is good good a good flush It is, is brimmed. Let me put the cap on before you touch it. Okay. Okay. You ready? Uh, I think so. I'm ready to make a mess on your freshly cleaned floor. Okay, well, we're just gonna keep at this for a little bit and uh, we'll be back for the, uh, I don't know, the drive test to see in these pads. <clears throat> yep, that's how you clean up after yourself. Yep. <laughs> Only takes two minutes, no big deal. All right, well, the new calipers are on. Everything's bled. We even bled the, the back. We pushed like a whole pint worth of fluid through this thing. So every drop of fluid in the truck is brand new and crystal clear. Um, I don't really know what else to say. There's a couple more things I wanted to do the, to this truck. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get that done on this truck. I think it's time just to punt it to the next guy and move on to some other projects I've got. So I, I guess we'll put it on the ground now. I'll go seat in these pads and give it a good solid road test. All right, well that was stop number one. About a 20 to zero mile per hour. Now we'll hit about a 30 to zero. <laughs> the seatbelt didn't lock. Yeah, the seatbelt didn't. <laughs> it's a 30 to zero. I think we pulled negative three G's or so based on my reaction. Feels like the opposite of a Tesla launching. The opposite. <laughs> it's like a 45 to zero. I'm feeling a lot of warpage in the. Yeah, you really, you could not tell before. No. But now you can feel everything in this. <laughs> this is not good. Man, our new fluid trick. Our new fluid trick made everything better and worse at the same time. We didn't know how bad it was. Yeah, I know. That was a problem. We got some Ranger on Ranger crime right there. Twin Rangers. Anyway. Josh is going out to do the ultimate test for us. He's going to try to lock up all four tires now that the brakes have all new fluid. And it seems like it's all working way better. Let's see this magic. <laughs> Only the rears. The fronts have so much stopping power, it's controlled. There must not be enough volume to the fronts or something like that. The rears sure locked up. That's more tire smoke than this thing's ever yeah, down. It was. I didn't have to correct it all. Yeah, it seems super nice. Pretty funny. <laughs> Sticky tires stopped at like two truck lanes. <laughs> it literally stopped it. I was going 30 miles an hour. Yep. I love it. Good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to day two of, uh, I guess this will be the final video of the Ranger. Kind of sad to see that thing go. Uh, 
yesterday we put new brakes, new brake calipers, pads, and hoses on it. And as soon as I started driving it, I noticed that it has significantly warped rotors. I don't know how I didn't notice that before. I, probably because the calipers were frozen in place or something. I, I don't I don't know. Uh, but I can't sell it like this. I mean, I can, but I'm not going to. So real quick, we're going to pull these front wheels off, pull the rotors off, take them over to O'Reilly's in the hopes that they can turn them. And they're still within spec. So if they get too thin, they just warp again and again and again and again. That's why there's a minimum thickness on these. Uh, kind of a safety issue, but also uh, if you go beyond that thickness, they just warp over and over and over and you do this every year. So at some point it's just best to buy new rotors and I'm hoping that's not today. Hope, hopefully these haven't been turned before and hopefully they're not too warped. They gotta take so much meat off of them that they're, that they're scrap metal because the only rotors I found are 60 bucks a piece and they won't have them until tomorrow morning. And this truck is sold today. So we'll have to make concessions on that on the sale if we can't get this done. So without further ado, we'll jump to a time lapse. I'm gonna do basically the same thing I did yesterday. Push those pins out of the calipers, pull the calipers off, pull the dust cover off the bearings, take out the large, well, there's a, a cotter pin in there. We'll take out the large king nut or castle nut. Uh, hey, zonkeys. What are you doing, bud? Oh, no. Hey. Uh, once you pull that large nut out there, uh, you'll see all the grease bearings, which we'll repack. Slide those rotors off. We'll take them over to O'Reilly's. Should be a 20 minute turnaround, 30 minute turnaround to get those turned. Slap them back on here and we should have perfect brakes. What do you think, Zeeks? Is that right? Yeah. Meow. Oh. Cool. Looks like, looks like my new jet's here. I'll have to go pick that up this afternoon. Oh, back to working on the ground in the driveway. That's, that's where I grew up. All right, well. This is, has the uh, probability to get pretty nasty and pretty grimy pretty quick. So on with the gloves and the bearings are a little, a little sloppy. See how long those spin? That's too long. There should be more grease inside that joint. Eh, I might be able to get the pliers on there. Way too dry. That's how that's how warped they are. And it doesn't seem like it's very bad, so this seems very turnable. But you got to understand these uh, places that turn rotors have. They don't even like to get near that minimum because they are on the hook for all the liability should something go wrong. So when doing this, you want to pull your bearings out because if you don't, you're likely to get your bearings back with a bunch of metal shavings and stuff from their workbench. It's a wheel bearing from the passenger front. See how dry that is inside there, all the rollers are dry, practically dry. That's uh, that's not good. That means somebody probably didn't lubricate them well when they put them in. So they don't look like they're factory. I think somebody's done this in the past, but didn't do a very good job in my opinion. So we are going to pack them full of grease. We'll drop our freshly greased bearings down in here. Drop our fresh bearings in there. Freshly packed anyway. Set our seals in place. Okay. 
and then we just slide the rotors on. Shove on our freshly packed adder bearing, slotted retaining washer, and nut. These didn't turn out to be castle nuts like I thought they were going to be. The difficulty of this job increases greatly when your fingers get all greasy. That's about what you want. Maybe half a rotation. Looks like I can lock it down right there. Gonna reuse the cotter key. That is a fracture rooster way. Perfecto. Now last but not least, get all the shavings and cuttings, and fingerprints and oils off of there, front and back. Well, I officially broke a sweat and I guess that's it. That's it for the Ranger. Wheels are back on. I'm gonna go bed in these pads one last time with the new rotors. You gotta rebed the pads. Uh, and I'm gonna head down to JR's shop where the new owner is gonna show up this afternoon and, uh, and take it home. I've got another truck, a half ton truck, which is probably more suited for towing and hauling and this truck will be limited on what it can do and how far it can go without cruise control, without, well, without, without a v, at least a V6. It's kind of limited on what it can haul, so it's probably best just to enjoy the time we had and kick it on to the next owner. Uh, from what I hear and understand, it's going to go to Tulsa, Oklahoma and become a shop truck for somebody down there. So if you're in the Tulsa area, be on the lookout for the Fractured Rooster Ranger. I suppose that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.